What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today we have a Doobie Brothers Top 10, the Michael McDonald years, brought to us by a friend and longtime supporter and patron of the channel, D. Thank you, D. Always appreciate you. D brought us a first part of the Doobie Brothers already up on the channel. I'll link it below. Go check it out after this review. It didn't have Michael on here, so we divided their career into two into two different parts, but I think it's really smart. So D has a nice write up here, and then we're gonna jump right into this list. D said most of the band's history was included in part one. This is just a quick description of what Michael McDonald brought to the band. No rock band I'm aware of ever made a complete change of their sound as the Doobie Brothers did when Tom Johnson left the band for health reasons and Michael McDonald joined them in 1976. I did a little research, Tom had uh, bleeding ulcers, and that's not ever a good thing. Until then, the band had a guitar-led sound that allowed for a hard rock sound. While they had keyboard parts in their recordings, they never had a permanent keyboardist. Michael McDonald brought that to them. Tom Johnson and Pat Simmons both have very soulful voices that lent them to that hard rock sound. Michael McDonald also has a soulful voice, but it lends itself to an R&B pop jazz sound. So that's where the band went. It was a very radical change. It brought the band more commercial success than they'd ever enjoyed before. It also led to problems within the band. His takeover was so complete that the rest of the band eventually felt like his backup band, which eventually led to their breakup. So before we jump into the list, just a reminder, the music will not be in here, but it will be at the Vimeo link down below. I'll have the lyrics up as always. We'll jump in right into number 10. You see it below. Wheels of Fortune from Taking It to the Streets in 1976. D says, this Pat Simmons song included a Tom Johnson vocal for a few lines in the second verse. Michael McDonald's first album with the group, it's like a farewell to the group's old sound. It was the second single off this album, it only went to 87 in the US. The lyrics describe how the wheels of fortune keep changing. So sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. You live long enough, boy, you know that. While Johnson was absent for most of the sessions, he contributed one song, the song Turn It Loose, and then sang back up and duet on this song with Simmons. Uh, Tom said, I hadn't quit the band. I just wasn't physically able to do it. I needed to get off the road and get away from that whole scene for a while. All right, guys, let's check it out. So Wheels of Fortune coming in at number 10. I mentioned it during the reaction, but you know, half the song is an instrumental breakdown there, and then they come back in and repeat that last verse again. Wonderful bass work, drumming, some horns in there, just fantastic. And it's about what I talked about in the beginning. I think the the last verse kind of uh kind of sums that up. I mean, it's the chorus, but it's changing wheels of fortune, driving us on and on, winning, sometimes losing. As soon as it's here, it's gone. I'm so tired of losing, but I still play the game, and I know there's no reason. Still, I go on searching just the same. Kind of a dichotomy of life, right? Every time you get up, sometimes it just means you're going to get back down. It's just the ebb and flow of life. you got to keep on pushing on, right? Believing that the next day is going to be better. So a great way to start this list. Now, we're going to number nine, You Belong to Me, from the Living on the Fault Line album in 1977. D said this was co-written by McDonald. And Carly Simon, whose recording of it was a hit a year later in 78. A live version of the song from the Doobie Brothers' 1983 album Farewell Tour would later chart in the U.S. at 79, all the way up in August of 83. You Belong to Me did not know that song. Thought I might know that song when it started out, but as usual, it's about the instrumentation and then Michael's voice is just so instantly recognizable. Not a ton to the song, just basically... She belongs to him, you know. Why'd you tell me like this? Why you look for my reaction? What do you need to know? Don't you know I'll always be the one? You don't have to prove to me you're beautiful to strangers. I've got loving eyes of my own. I'm guessing another guy asked his girl out, so she just wanted to make sure he knew that. And then, you know, the rest of it, I mean, there's not a lot to lyrics. You know, the last lyrics, you belong to me. Tell him you were fooling. You belong to me. You belong to me. Tell him he's a stranger. You belong to me. But they get the nice harmonies. You belong to me. And just... Obviously, a world-class musicianship always in this band, and that kind of makes this song. And we'll come in at number eight with the title track of the album that we just took the last song off of. This is Living on the Fault Line from the album of the same name in 77. D says this song flexes the group's jazz muscles. Living on the Fault Line is basically just a story about living on the earthquake line, right? You don't know what's underneath you, and then there's this whole world going on under there, and it could come in India. I think the, the story is definitely, it's, it's over half of it. it's an instrumental breakdown in there. I think I mentioned during the reaction with Patrick Simmons on the guitar and, of course, Skunk Baxter on the guitar. Michael's on every sort of uh, organ and piano that you could you could think of. But you got Victor Feldman on that vibraphone giving it a unique sound. And then, of course, you've got the double drumming of Keith Newton and, and John Hartman. So a really, uh, a really good song, really well done, very jazz-like as D explained at the start. Now we're going to move on to the title track of their 1978 album, Minute by Minute. D says McDonald's smooth vocals 
leads this beautiful ballad I found is written by Michael and Lester Abrams. Single went to 14 in the U.S., 47 in the U.K. Nominated for Grammy Song of the Year, but this is how you know you are incredibly popular, boys and girls. They lost out to their own song, What a Fool Believes, which may or may not be on this list. Let's keep the drama up. Minute by Minute. I knew that little course, that Minute by Minute. I don't think I knew any of the rest of it, but... Um, Good song, interesting. No guitars on this song, or none credited, and I couldn't really hear him. Uh, you've got Mike on the on the keyboard synthesizers lead. You got Taryn Porter on the on the bass and vocals, and Keith on the drums. And Bill Payne comes in and helps out on the synths, and Bobby Lakine comes in on the conga. So uh, it's interesting how Michael's already changing the sound. This is the last album, by the way, too, that Skunk Baxter appears on, but. Uh, you know, the song itself, really good, really smooth. The minute by minute, it's done so well to stick in your head. It's a standard story lyrically that you see so many times. He starts, I've, I've been here many times before. Girl, don't you worry. I know where I stand. I don't need this love. I don't need your hand. I know I could turn blink and you'd be gone. Then I must be prepare, prepared any time to carry on. So he knows she doesn't feel for him like he feels for her. But then the chorus, but minute by minute by minute by minute, I'll be holding on. Oh, minute by minute by minute by minute, I'll be holding on. So then he, then he goes on and... The next verse, like, I know you're messing me over. I know I shouldn't be here, but he gets that holding on. Call my name and I'll be gone. You'll reach out and I won't be there. Just my luck, you'll realize you should spend your life with someone. You could spend your life with someone. I guess his luck that she's going to find it in someone else. So kind of like the songwriting on that one. Now we're going to stay on this album minute by minute from 1978. You see it below, depending on you. D says this is the only song co-written by Simmons and McDonald. It's an interesting blend of the different styles. Yeah, this ought to be good. Dependent on you, obviously Patrick was on lead vocals here, and it definitely, as D said, an, an interesting blending of styles because the previous track didn't have any guitar, and this had such great guitar work and horns in here, and just had that sound of some of the earlier tracks we heard on this list. So I really did enjoy that one. I mentioned during it, it's, it's the exact opposite of the last track because minute by minute he knew she was leaving, and on this one she's there for him. He's dependent on her. When I was low, you were there to lift me up. Well, there's one thing I know for sure, babe. You're going to win life's loving cup. Darwin, you're always there at my rescue. Depending on you, Darwin, you're always there by my side. You're always there by my side. You're always there at my rescue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting those nice harmonies on there. That had a much different sound to it. Really enjoyed that. It was, it was great to have those back-to-back. -back. Did a good job with that. Same album, totally different style. Now we're already to the top five of this list. We got one step closer. Uh, the title track from their album in 1980. D said this was sort of their swan song along with Real Love. One step close. I really enjoy that. You got Cornelius Bumpus on lead vocals. They're sharing them with Mike and Cornelius also playing the saxophone on here. He also plays the organ on this album. Um, just really, really enjoyed that one, man. Great sound. Great harmonies in there. Michael going all in, breaking out a little bit there on, on a couple of those lines and, and really going all in. But just a very smooth sound, man. It's, it's a shame that, as D said, this was kind of their swan song because it's a really nice dichotomy there. A, kind of a mix of both styles, of the McDonald and the pre-McDonald style. It works super well for me. And he's just in the lyrics just telling her, look, why don't you take a chance? Like he's trying to get her to commit to him. He's committed to her and he wants her just to say it, just say it. Well, he's telling her, I'll be there no matter what happens in life. I'll be there in the good and bad times. Just tell me the same. Go ahead, please tell me. And so that's what he's asking for there. It's kind of the story of life sometimes, right? All right, let's go on to number four. And we have Little Darling in parentheses, I Need You from the Living on the Fault Line album in 1977. He said this is a cover of a Holland Dozier Holland, the great HDH song originally recorded by Marvin Gaye. Of course, HDH was the Motown songwriting team. So uh, interesting for them to take a a cover of Marvin Gaye. Let's check it out. Little Darling, I Need You. And I'm going to tell you what, if you're going to tackle Motown, you better knock it out of the park. And they knocked it out of the park. Michael's voice sounds phenomenal on this. The harmonies are top notch. They even got a guitar solo in there from, from Jeff or Skunk, as he likes to be called. Uh, just, just so well done. And the story writing is classic HDH, Motown. The girl's gone. He's trying to employ her. Come back to me. Little darling, I need you. Little darling, I need you. I want you. Gotta have you. I and mean, he's giving up my pride. Oh, I'm going to give it up. There's always one who loves more than the other. That is that is the story of, of life, boys and girls. 
one person's always going to love more than the other. And sometimes that shifts in relationship from time to time. As long as one of them's still loving, uh, you'll be in good shape. I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm willing to pay the price. Have your love at any sacrifice. And back into that, that course, it's just infectious. Just a great job and a great pick, Dave, to come in at number four. Now to number three, the title track from the album, Taking It to the Streets in 1976. Dee said this is the title song of McDonald's first album with the group and is an example of their complete change of their sound. I found it was their first single with Michael McDonald on vocals and was written by Michael. It peaked at 13 in the U.S. and 7 in Canada. I do know this song. Taking it to the streets. Great song, great message. He's basically saying, look, I'm your brother and, and we're going to get to know each other. We're going to take this to the street. They say taking it to the streets. I counted as I was looking at the lyrics over 30 times. But in it, like Michael gets these little vocal inflections. Ah, yeah, it, it doesn't sound repetitive at all because they sound so good at harmonizing that. Um, fantastic song. They're all firing on all cylinders. I know it's a big change of sound, but on this one, they definitely came out uh, firing for Michael's first single. It is a great song. And now we're to number two. And if you looked below and cheated and saw what the song was on Spotify, if you didn't look, you just did now. We got What a Fool Believes, which D says... Uh, this is from the Minute by Minute album, 1978, by the way. He says, this is by far and away the band's most popular hit. It's co-written by McDonald and Kenny Loggins. It's the band's second number one hit. It won a Grammy for Record of the Year. I know this would be most people's top pick, and I expect to take a little flack for making it number two, but there's one I like better. This also won Grammy for Song of the Year, so two Grammys. It was one of the few non-disco number one hits on the Billboard Hot 100 during the first eight months of 1979. I remember boys and girls, disco ruled in the late 70s. Lyrics tell the story of a man who's re reunited with an old love interest and attempts to rekindle a romantic relationship with her before discovering that one never really existed. Uh-oh, I've been in those situations way back when. It was claimed that Michael Jackson contributed at least one backing track to the original Doobie Brothers recording, but was not credited for having done so. This was later denied by the band, but you're going to see that out there. Uh, Kenny Loggins, of course, was co-writer of this song, released his own version of it five months prior to the Doobies version on his second album, Night Watch, but it didn't do anything. This is way, way before Kenny, you know, got foot loose and went to the danger zone. This is 78. What a fool believes. There's a reason why this song is so freaking acclaimed. It is so, so catchy. I mean, Michael kills it on the keys and sense, man. That, that's the real star of this. And then, of course, the harmonies are the star of it. But... You know, I mentioned it during the reaction, but the chorus, it's the way they deliver it, right? It's not necessarily the words. This song is, is written okay. It's fine. It's not a masterpiece lyrically. It's the way it's delivered, man, and carried out because but a, what a fool believes he sees and they just hold those lines and then they totally change the vocal delivery to no wise man has the power to reason away. What seems to be so it just kind of gets in there. It's it's all about the way the vocals really are delivered. And you know, the doobies, of course, are some of the best musicianship captured on vinyl, especially on some of their earlier albums. But this one really is about the vocal performance. Just just fantastic, man. And you know, the course, you know, but what a fool believes he sees, no wise man has the power to reason away. What seems to be is always better than nothing, than nothing at all. So it's like no, man, I, I know she likes me. It's That's better. She likes me even just a little bit than her not liking me at all because we kind of, we believe what we want to believe and we see what we want to see and no one's going to tell us any different. Um, if you're a, of an old enough age, you've been in that situation maybe one, two times, something like that. All right, well, now you're probably wondering, what's number one? Drum roll, you see it below. It keeps you running from taking it to the streets in 1976. D says, well, not only showing off their new sound, it has a sound that I find absolutely infectious. It sticks in my mind in a way that no other McDonald's song does. I don't think I know this song. It scares me because the last song, What a Fool Believe, sticks in your head like crazy. This one was written by Michael. Third single. It was also covered and released as a single by Carly Simon. So you get that Carly Simon connection in there again. Uh, the Doobies version was featured in the 1994 Oscar winning film Forrest Gump. Also featured in the soundtrack of the 1978 film FM. Let's check out number one. It keeps you running. I know what I think of every song on this list except for this one. I really don't know. Do I love this song? Do I not care for it that much? It's very, very interesting and very different. And the fact the instrumentation is quite different. Michael doesn't sing the chorus. It's harmonized back to you. The longer it went on, the more it's stuck in my head. So I can definitely see what you're saying on this one, D. And, and basically the lyrics are, he's trying to talk to this girl and he loves her. He thinks she loves him or has feelings for him. So he's trying to get her to admit that and embrace that and not run. He starts out, say where you're going to go. Girl, where are you going to hide? You go on leaving out your heart and all it's saying down deep inside. 
From here, I can feel your heartbeat. Oh, you got me all wrong. You ain't got no worry. You just been lonely too long. I'm not gonna hurt you, man. Don't be cautious of me. I know what it means to hide your heart from a long time ago, oh darling. It keeps you running. Yeah, it keeps you running. So he's trying to talk her into like just embracing her feelings for him. Or maybe she doesn't have any feelings for him, but he's trying to convince her that she does. Now we're gonna go into my favorite tracks. Honorable mention, I got Minute by Minute. And Little Darwin, I Need You, the uh, HGH Marvin Gaye Motown cover. Thought they did a great job on that. My faves, One Step Closer from that 1980 album with Cornelia sharing uh, lead vocals with Michael. I thought that worked really well. Taking It to the Streets, great message in that one. And of course, it's cliched, man, but I got to do it right. What a Fool Believes. I hadn't heard that song in decades. It's so, so good. And now that I've gone through two different top 10 lists in the different eras of the Doobie Brothers, definitely quite different as Dee was kind of emphasizing on our first video and a little bit at the start of this one. I don't know which version of them I like more. The earlier version of them are going to have longer instrumentation runs. They're going to have, you know, more instrumentation in the songs. It's more about that. Here we're going to have more keyboards. It's definitely focused more on Michael, although, you know, Michael has one of the best all-time voices that you're ever going to hear. One of the most unique, you know, it's him right away. So this is a fun journey. I didn't know many Doobie Brothers songs. I would say between the 20 songs, I probably knew five of them, maybe six of them, and just knew them kind of in passing besides what a fool believes. They just predated me just a little bit. But appreciate all the work you put into this D. Appreciate everybody for watching. If you'd like to support us in any way like D does, check out our Patreon link below. There will also be a link down there for part one of the Doobie Brothers Top 10, the pre-McDonald years. And until next time, guys, I will see you.